Okay. So today we, we will talk about Smaranam, Remembrance of Krishna. So I have chosen this verse from Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita 1858. Mak chitta sarva durgani mak prasada tarishyasi atha chetpam ahankaran na shroshyasi vinakshyasi. Translation, if you become conscious of me, you will pass over all the obstacles of conditioned life by my grace. If, however, you do not work in such consciousness, but act through false ego, not hearing me, you will be lost. Purport. A person in full Krishna consciousness is, is not unduly anxious about executing the duties of his existence. The foolish cannot understand this great freedom from all anxiety. For one who acts in Krishna consciousness, Lord Krishna becomes the most intimate friend. He always looks after his friend's comfort and he gives himself to his friend who is so devotedly engaged working 24 hours a day to please the Lord. Therefore, no one should be carried away by the false ego of the bodily concept of life. One should not falsely think himself independent of the laws of material nature or free to act. He is already under strict material laws. But as soon as he acts in Krishna consciousness, he is liberated, free from the material perplexities. One should note very carefully that one who is not active in Krishna consciousness is losing himself in the material whirlpool, in the ocean of birth and death. No conditioned soul actually knows what is to be done and what is not to be done. But a person who acts in Krishna consciousness is free to act because everything is prompted by Krishna from within and confirmed by the spiritual master. So, um, for the past few days, we have been talking about um, how to give our mind to Krishna. Like yesterday, we talked about Parikshit Maharaj and Rukmini Devi who gave their mind to Krishna. And how did they do that? By attentively hearing about the wonderful qualities and pastimes of Krishna. They developed attachment for Krishna. So if we become attracted to Krishna, then automatically detachment from material things will happen. We don't need to work separately to become detached from this material world. Like Bhagavad Gita says that if you develop a higher taste, then automatically the lower taste is going to go away. So I, so I was thinking of an example like as a child, uh, when we were small, we were attracted to things like Barbie dolls or toy cars. But now that we have grown up as adults, we are not attracted to those things. So in the same way, when our consciousness has been elevated and we understand the reality that who we are, we are servants of Krishna and who Krishna is. And Krishna is my best friend. He is a Surat Sakha. Then all the material things in this world will be like those Barbie dolls and those toy cars. We will not be attracted to them. So our Krishna consciousness philosophy, the most important thing about our philosophy, we need to be conscious of Krishna. Smartavya satatam vishnu vismartavya na jatuchit sarve vidhi nisheda siyur etayur eva kankara. The most important principle is to always remember Krishna and never forget Krishna. And this verse that we read today in this Bhagavad Gita that we are reading, it is saying that one who remembers Krishna all the time, 24 hours a day working to please Krishna, then he can easily cross all obstacles in life. As Prabhupada is saying in the purport, for the person who remembers Krishna all the time, Krishna becomes an intimate friend and Krishna, he looks after the comfort of his friend and he gives himself to his friend. Like yesterday we were reading in Rukmini Devi's pastime, we read Krishna, he said to the Brahmana, uh, once he read the Rukmini's letter that um, like Rukmini is thinking of me, I'm also thinking of her. My mind is fixed on her and I can't sleep at night. All the time I'm thinking about her. So, if we remember Krishna, then Krishna 
will remember us. He's there. Whenever we call him immediately, he will come. So smaranam, remembrance, is one of the nine limbs of devotional service. We have Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandatam, Dasyam, Sakhyam, Atma, Nivedanam. So Smaranam is one of the nine limbs. And Smaranam comes after Shravanam and Kirtanam. So Shravanam means hearing Hari Katha and Kirtanam means speaking Hari Katha or chanting the holy name. So if we do these two things nicely, Shravanam and Kirtanam, if we do these two two things nicely then smaranam remembrance of the lord will automatically happen so what should we do is when we hear the harikatha so we need to do it nicely shravanam and kirtanam so when we hear harikatha we should um, hear attentively and we should take notes and um, i myself i'm starting the habit of taking notes when I hear classes, I jot down important points that I heard. And then what we should do is we should do kirtanam, meaning that whatever we have heard in the class, we should find someone like a family member or a friend and repeat what we have heard to them. So in this way, uh, when we teach others or we repeat the things that we have heard, then, then we remember those things and we don't lose them. So that's, that's how remembrance happens for those in things that we have learned we have heard also we should apply uh, what we have heard in our lives so classes um, these kathas are not meant for just collecting information collecting knowledge um, they are meant for transformation so whatever techniques we learn from um, the classes like mind control techniques or improving japa techniques like that um, we should apply them and um, Otherwise, uh, we will not get the benefit of hearing the Harikatha. So then another thing is that um, there could be two persons who are hearing the same Harikatha, but the impact of the Harikatha on those two persons could be totally different because the attitude in which one hears the Harikatha is important. So some examples are given in the Shastras. We have the wife of... Um, Hirnekashipu, Kayadu, mother of Prahlad Maharaj. When she was uh, pregnant with Prahlad Maharaj in her womb, uh, after Hirnekashipu had gone on to do uh, austerities, Indra came and he tried to kill Kayadu. And uh, Narad Muni, he came there to protect Kayadu and he took her to her, his ashram. And in his ashram, Narad Muni was speaking Harikatha, Srimad Bhagavatam every day. And it is mentioned that uh, Kayadu, she heard the same instructions as Prahlad Maharaj, who was in her womb. Actually, Narad Muni was preaching to Kayadu, but Prahlad Maharaj in the womb of his mother, he heard it. And he heard it more receptively. And he was completely transformed. Whereas Kayadu, she heard the Harikatha, but, but she remained attached to her husband there was no transformation and Prabhupada writes in one purport that uh, uh, Prahlad's mother, she was more concerned about protecting her child and she was very anxious for her husband to return. Therefore, she didn't consider very seriously the sublime instructions of Narad Muni. And even Prahlad Maharaj, he says that uh, in one of the verses in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, this Prahlad Maharaj is saying, Narad Muni delivered the his instructions both to me, who was in the womb, and to my mother, who was engaged in rendering service. Because of long duration of time that has passed, and because of her being a woman, and therefore less intelligent, my mother has forgotten all those instructions. But the great sage Narad blessed me, and therefore I could not forget them. And uh, in another purport, Prabhupada writes that uh, this transcendental message of the Absolute is not understandable by those who are materially absorbed. So those who are listening Harikatha inattentively and they are attached to other things, they are anxious about so many other things going on, um, then hearing Harikatha would not have an impact on them. So then uh, we have another example like this. We have the example of Dhritarashtra. He heard Bhagavad Gita from Sanjay. Sanjay heard Bhagavad Gita directly from Krishna by the mercy of Vyasadeva. And at the end of uh, 
the entire Bhagavad Gita, Sanjay, we have some verses in the end of Bhagavad Gita where Sanjay is saying, Oh, my hair is standing on end. I'm feeling great ecstasy as I repeatedly recall this wonderful uh, dialogue between Krishna and Arjuna. I take pleasure. I'm thrilled at every moment of such a wonderful um, uh, conversation happened between Krishna and Arjuna. I'm struck with wonder. So that's his uh, response at the end of Bhagavad Gita. And then he says this uh, famous verse. Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna, Yatra Parth Dhanurdhara, Tatra Shri Vijayo Bhuti Dhruva Nitirma Tirmama. So Sanjay is saying, wherever there is Krishna, the master of all mystics, and wherever there is Arjuna, the supreme ar archer, there will certainly be opulence, victory, extraordinary power and morality. That is my opinion. So that's, that's the conclusion um, that Sanjay came to after hearing Bhagavad Gita. So Sanjay had a complete transformation, but we see that there was no transformation in Dhritarashtra who was hearing Bhagavad Gita from Sanjay. He remained attached to his sons. And we see at the end of the Kurukshetra war, um, when the Pardavas had won and they came to meet Dhritarashtra, what, what did he try to do? He tried to murder Bhim by embracing him tightly, he tried to crush him to, to powder. So Dhritarashtra, there was no change in Dhritarashtra after hearing Bhagavad Gita. So the attitude uh, matters on how we are hearing Harikatha. Um, another example that I could think of is um, Ravana. So Ravana, he heard from Shruknakha, the beauty of um, Srimati Sita Devi and he developed lusty desires in her and he then decided to kidnap Sita Devi. But it is also mentioned that Ravana, he heard instruction from Vibhishan, Vibhishan who was a great devotee of Lord Ram. So Ravana heard from Vibhishan, but Ravana was not transformed because he didn't have a proper attitude. We have Bhagavad Gita verse, it says that Tat vidhi pranipate na pari prashne na sevaya upadikshanti te gyanam gyani na statvadarshina. That we should have, when we hear Harikatha, we should have submissive oral reception. We should hear uh, Harikatha submissively because we consider that person who is speaking Harikatha, he, he knows, he knows, he has seen the truth, this verse is saying. He can impart knowledge onto me because he has seen the truth. So I need to hear submissively. So that that mood of surrender should be there. But Ravana, he was thinking when Vibhishan was giving him instruction, who is Vibhishan? He's just my younger brother. He's a fool. I'll not listen to him. I'm not going to take his message seriously. So that was his attitude. Um, so that's why he was not transformed. Another example is given in, this is in Chaitanya Chaitamrit. We have the example of Gopal Chakravarti in Gaur Leela. Once Haridas Thakur, he was invited to give a talk about holy name in the home of uh, Majumdars. And this is the house of one of our Goswamis, Raghunath Das Goswami, when he was a small boy at that time. Uh, Haridas Thakur had come to give a talk on uh, holy name, the glories of the holy name. So Gopal Chakravarti, he was in the audience and he heard the same class from Haridas Thakur as Raghunath Das Goswami. Uh, he was not Goswami at that time. He was a small child, Raghunath Das. So Haridas Thakur, he, he was glorifying the holy name. So Haridas Thakur, he was saying that even Nama Bhas chanting, even if you chant the holy name unknowingly, involuntarily, even if you chant once the name of Hari, it will give you liberation, moksha. And liberation is an insignificant result derived from a glimpse of the awakening of offenseless chanting. That's called Nama Bhas. So liberation is an insignificant result derived from Nama Bhas chanting. It is, or moksha is easily offered by Krishna to a devotee who chants the Hare Krishna mantra in Nababhas. So this, like this, Haridas Thakur was speaking. So Gopal Chakravarti, he was hearing Haridas Thakur. He was in the assembly. And Gopal Chakravarti, he was a jnani. 
and he was furious hearing haridas thakur he was saying that what are you saying that liberation moksha is a insignificant by product of chanting the holy name how only after millions and million births when one attains complete knowledge of the absolute can one attain liberation what are you talking about the liberation is easily obtained krishna easily gives liberation to someone who chants his holy name so like that he he was not convinced and he was actually um, talking in offensive manner he challenged haridas thakur he he challenged haridas thakur that if one will not get liberated by nama bhas chanting I, i will cut your news so he said i will cut off your news so haridas thakur he accepted this challenge of gopal chakravarti and haridas said yeah i i agree if by nama bhas liberation uh, if somebody does, if if by nama bhas liberation does not happen then i will cut off my nose and then what we know what happened next um gopal chakravarti he was offensive to haridas thakur he criticized haridas thakur and krishna he does not like when somebody is offensive to his devotee so what happened in few days gopal chakravarti he got leprosy and he, actually his nose fell off so the point is that gopal chakravarti on hearing the hari katha from haridas thakur he was in a argumentative mood he was not hearing submissively or humbly asking questions if he didn't understand thing he could have asked it humbly clarified things but he was rude and offensive whereas uh, raghunath das it was this hearing hari katha from uh, haridas thakur it was a transformational moment in his life and that day uh, raghunath das he took the instructions of chaitanya mahaprabhu chanting of the holy name of the lord very seriously and he gave his life to chanting of the holy name of the lord and he became an exalted devotee he became our goswami raghunath das goswami so again two people hearing the same hari katha very different results depending on the attitude of the hearer so for an intelligent person only once giving them instruction they take those instructions to the heart and start following acting upon those instructions like we were hearing bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur our guru a maharaj of our shila prabhupad in the first meeting he told shila prabhupad oh you are an educated man you, why don't you preach lord chaitanya mahaprabhu's message throughout the whole world so shila prabhupad he always kept this instruction of his guru maharaj in his heart he contemplated on those instruction and he prayed kept, kept on praying that one day i'm going to i'm going to act upon these instructions i'm going to please my guru maharaj and shila prabhupad was successful in doing that because he never forgot the instructions of his guru maharaj although shila prabhupad he met met bhakti sadanta saraswati thakur only very few times but whenever he met him he heard attentively from him and he took all his instructions to his memory he he remembered those instructions he acted upon those instructions and he also taught others so like this um this is the proper way of remembering remembrance of uh, what we have heard and other things that um, other example i was thinking was um, bilva mangal thakur we know uh, that bilva mangal thakur he was um, very much attached to a prostitute called chintamani and uh, he was so much attached that one day his father died and he performed he was he was he performed the shrad ceremony of his father and after performing the shrad ceremony balva mangal thakur he ran to meet the prostitute and as he was as he was running there was a, there was a heavy storm and he had to cross a river and he crossed the river by holding on to a corpse a dead body and when he reached the prostitute's house uh, her gate was blocked so what he did was he climbed the wall of the prostitute by grabbing onto a cobra he thought the cobra was a rope so he grabbed onto the cobra so seeing balva mangal thakur uh, he was soaking wet and he was burning with the desire to enjoy and he was totally exhausted this uh, prostitute chintamani she said these words to balva mangal thakur she said you are so much attached to this bag of flesh and bones 
if you are so much attached to my body which is nothing but a bag of flesh and bones if only you had such eagerness to serve krishna like you have eagerness to enjoy with me if you only you had such eagerness to serve krishna then you would have become the greatest devotee on the planet so these words from chintamani they just woke up bilva mangal thakur he had a 360 degree transformation he immediately left that place he went to vrindavan and he did extreme sadhana and he became a great devotee so these are examples of people who just heard the instruction once and and they had a complete transformation another example i was thinking was is from ramayan that of shabri shabri she was a tribal lady she was not born in a high aristocratic family she was from a very low uh, family and shabri she heard from her guru uh, matang rishi when her guru was leaving the material world he was dying um, he told shabri that he, shabri you stay here in pampa sarovar and you keep the ashram in a good shape ram and lakshman will come one day you be hospitable to them you receive them nicely and serve them nicely and this is how you will achieve perfection of life shabri she had full faith in the instructions of her guru at that time shabri she was a very young girl so shabri she followed her guru's instructions faithfully every single day with full enthusiasm she would wake up early in the morning thinking that today ram and lakshman will come to my ashram so she would clean the whole ashram she will pluck the best fruits she will make fresh cups every day from dried leaves and she would take grass and she would make fresh mats for ram and lakshman every day because old grass mats they become dry and hard and she didn't want to offer those hard and dry mats she wanted to make fresh soft mats for ram and lakshman so every day she would make those fresh mats so like that many thousands of years passed and now shabri she became a very old woman but still she never missed one day in preparing her ashram to welcome ram and lakshman and what happened one day she got darshan of ram and lakshman they came specially to meet their devotee who had full faith in the words of her guru and acted on his instructions day after day so shabri she lovingly fed ram and lakshman her jhoothe bhair and after getting blessings from lord ram she went back to the spiritual world giving up her body so like shabri we also have received instructions from our guru shila prabhupad so lesson for for us is that we also need to consistently perform our sadhana like shabri every day get up early morning and chant every day decorate and worship deities offer them the best we can every day read shrimad bhagavatam bhagavad gita knowing that one day we are going to meet the lord face to face and it could be today that krishna comes and sees how his devotee is doing um sadhana how his devotee has prepared like bhoga for krishna so like that we have to be fully prepared to receive the lord so shabri she shows us how to have faith in the instructions of the guru and even if we are not seeing any results now like thousands of years passed later than ram and lakshman came but we need to be patient uh, we need to be patiently executing the instructions even if we are not seeing any results um patience is one of the items that are favorable for bhakti rupa goswami has said in nectar of instruction utsaha nischaya dhairyat tat tat karma pravartana so dhairyat in patience so we need to execute um, our krishna consciousness uh, sadhana with patience so smaranam remembrance the guru of um, acharya of remembrance acharya of smaranam is pralad maharaj in shrimad bhagavatam um our acharya there is a acharya for every single limb of uh, nine process of devotional service and uh, for smaranam we have pralad maharaj 
So Prahlad Maharaj, he was only a five-year-old boy, but he had such faith in the instructions of his guru, Narad Muni. And um, his faith was tested. He heard from his Guru Dev Narad Muni that Krishna, he is a supreme personality of God and Krishna always protects his devotees. And he had faith in these words of Narad Muni. And because of this faith, he was able to stand up against the so many torturous conditions that Hirnakashapu was putting Prahlad Maharaj through. So Hirnakashapu was so making so many attempts to kill Prahlad Maharaj. It is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. So many different ways he tried to kill Prahlad Maharaj. Hirnak- so I'm going to read this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, 7th Canto. Hirnakashapu could not kill his son by throwing him beneath the feet of big elephants, throwing him among huge, fearful snakes, employing destructive spells, hurling him from the top of a hill, conjuring up illusory tricks, administrating poison, starving him, exposing him to severe cold winds, fire and water, or throwing heavy stones to crush him. When Hirnikashapu found that he could not in any way harm Prahlad, who was completely sinless, he was in great anxiety about what to do next. So we see so many different ways Hirnikashapu was uh, applying to try to kill little Prahlad. So when Prahlad, he was being thrown in the pit of dangerous poisonous serpents, he had faith in his guru, Narad Muni, who had told him that Krishna always protects his devotees. So what can these serpents do to me? And because of that faith, Krishna, in the heart of the serpents, they welcomed Prahlad Maharaj and made a comfortable sitting place for Prahlad Maharaj. They did not bite him. And when Prahlad Maharaj was put in the fire with his aunt Holika, even though she had a great benediction that fire could not burn him, Prahlad Maharaj sat on her lap and he remembered Narad Muni's words that Krishna is the supreme controller of controller. He protects his devotees and he had faith in his words of his guru. And he knew that fire cannot harm me. And even if it did harm me, because I'm remembering Krishna, I will go back home, back to Godhead. So what is there to be afraid? So he was remembering like that. And then we see his aunt Holika, she was burned to ashes, but Prahlad Maharaj, he was protected. He didn't get burned. Even when his father was giving him deadly poison, Prahlad Maharaj, he was remembering, oh, I've heard that if I offer uh, this patram pushpam phalam toyam, if I offer this to Krishna, then that becomes prasad. My Guru Maharaj has told me. So he didn't hesitate to eat what uh, Hirnikashipu was giving him, the poisonous, the poison. So he, so like that, that poison had no effect, effect on him. Uh, he remembered, Pratijanihi na me bhakte pranashati. Krishna is saying in Bhagavad Gita that declare it boldly, O Arjuna, that my devotee never perishes. So like that, Prahlad kept remembering and meditating on the instructions he had received from Narad Muni. Rakhi Krishna Mareke, Mare Krishna Rakhi Ke. If Krishna wants to save me, then who can kill me? If Krishna wants to kill me, then who can save me? So like that. And then Krishna, you are my father. He was thinking like that. Krishna, you are my father. You know what is best for me. I am a puppet in your hands. You make me dance as you wish. You give me whatever you think is good for me. So like that, we should also think same as Prahlad Maharaj is thinking that Krishna, you know my best interest. You know what is good for me. I know the miseries in my life are also your blessings. I know that you're giving me miseries because you want to remove the impurities from my heart so that I become like pure gold so that I don't have any impurities in me. That's why you're giving me some miseries. But Krishna, I know that you are all good. So like that, we need to have um, faith in Krishna's protection for his devotees. And Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, for one who sees me everywhere and everything in me, I am not lost to him and he is never lost to me. Yomam pashyati sarvatra, sarvam chamai pashyati, tasyaham 
ना प्रणिश्यामी सच में ना प्रणश्यति सो प्रहलाद महाराज ही वॉज सींग कृष्णा एवरीवे when hernakashipu asked him where is your vishnu is he in this pillar pranad maharaj said yes vishnu is everywhere and he is also in this pillar so to prove the words of his devotee to be true narsingh dev he appeared from the pillar to kill hernakashipu so i was hearing uh, radhanath swami maharaj he was saying in one class that pralad he was innocent and he had a very simple heart he simply accepted krishna saying krishna i am yours that is all that is required there are great great yogis who perform tapasya for years and years and developing they have developed these great powers mystic powers within them but they cannot understand krishna because they think that they are great they are great possessors of powers but they have lost their simplicity and innocence of heart so like pralad maharaj his heart was innocent he was simple and he was humble i am nothing but but whoever has this um, concept of how oh, i am great i am some someone great and that they cannot understand krishna it is said that one must be like a child to understand krishna a child is simple and innocent and a child has natural faith and a child is totally dependent on his parents so whenever there is a danger uh, what does a child do he runs to his parents for protection and whenever the child gets some good thing he get good marks in his class he gets a good report card he wants to sh- he want he runs to his parents oh, sh- to show his parents oh parents see what i did uh, i did something great today i my teacher told me this i won this prize today so same thing everything good that we get we should run to krishna oh krishna look you did it and every difficult situation we should run to krishna for shelter so in this way in this way there is no difference between good and bad for a devotee in any situation he gets he runs to krishna so there is a verse in chaitanya charitamrit that says dvaita bhadra bhadra gyan sab manodharm ei bhala ei manda ei sab bhram means that in this material world saying that this is good and this is bad is all mental speculation it's it's a mistake so for us in all situation good or bad the result should be the same that we are running to krishna taking shelter of krishna we have another verse in bhagavad gita um about the dualities how a bhakta is not impacted by the dualities of good or evil yah sarvatra na bisneha tat tat prapya shubha shubham na bhinandati na dveshti tasya pragna pratishtita in the material world one who is unaffected by whatever good or evil he may obtain neither praising it nor despising it is firmly fixed in perfect knowledge so um radhanath swami he was saying that how can we transcend the dualities of material nature the good and evil that we obtain honor and dishonor happiness and distress how do we transcend that so he was saying that it does not mean that we become so hard hearted that we don't understand what is a difficulty and what is a easy time or what is pleasurable and what is painful we would experience that those things because we have a body but according to bhagavad gita the transcending of dualities of honor and dishonor happiness and distress uh, the person becoming sthita pragya or sthita dhimuni what does it mean is that because is that the devotee he runs to krishna with a glad and grateful heart in all situations in all situations he is thanking krishna for that situation and because he is thankful in a in a child like manner he sees he sees krishna's hand in all the situations so krishna is giving me distress that's also mercy of krishna krishna is giving me this nice situation that's also mercy of krishna so in that way all we can rise above the dualities is we we see all situations um we see the hand of krishna in all situation the plan of krishna in all situations so when we see something in this material world see a situation we should see it from the eyes of the shastras shastra chakshu spiritual vision 
means that we see everything as a property of Krishna. So to see Krishna in everything and to utilize everything for Krishna. That's Krishna consciousness. So like um, Prabhupada was giving an example. One time one devotee asked Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada, you're talking about seeing Krishna everywhere in everything. How do we see Krishna in these dead objects of the matter in this world? When we see some material thing, how do we see Krishna in that? So Prabhupada, he was giving an example. He said, uh, you see there on my desk, what do you see? Devotee said, Srila Prabhupada, I see your glasses. Your glasses. And Prabhupada says, what do you think when you see those glasses? Even if I'm 10,000 miles away, when you see my glasses, what do you see? So devotee said, I would think that these are Srila Prabhupada's glasses. So Prabhupada said, yes, you are seeing me in my glasses. So in the same way, everything in this material world is a property of Krishna. If we simply see, you know, Prabhupada was saying, these, giving these examples, if we simply see this is Krishna's microphone, this is Krishna's harmonium, this is Krishna's body. And when we see our wife, she's Krishna's daughter. When we see our husband, she, he's Krishna's son. When we see our children, they are Krishna's children. When we see our home, this is Krishna's home. When we get a paycheck, this is Krishna's money. In this way, we see Krishna everywhere in everything. And then when we see Krishna in everything, we, we also utilize everything for Krishna. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, I am the taste of water. I am the light of the sun and the moon. I am the fragrance of the earth. I am the heat in the fire. So, so in many ways, uh, we can perceive Krishna in the nature. And if we get impressed by someone, such a beautiful person and such a talented person, such a rich person, we should know that their beauty, their intelligence, their wealth, everything is coming from Krishna. And Krishna says that these extraordinary things in the material world are just a spark of my splendor. And if we, if we should, that we should think that if this spark, if we see a beautiful person, it's you know, such a beautiful person, but this spark is so extraordinary extraordinary then how extraordinary would be my Krishna if this person is so beautiful how beautiful must be Krishna so in this way um, when we see some extraordinary things in this material world we should remember Krishna when we uh, Krishna says that I am the ability in men so whatever we are able to do in our life it is because Krishna is giving us the ability he is giving us the intelligence his intelligence of the intelligence. He is the power, uh, power of the powerful. He is the strength in the strong. Krishna says that. So whatever strength, whatever power, whatever little intelligence we have, we have been given that by Krishna. Without Krishna's mercy, we can't even lift one finger to do. We can't even lift one finger if we don't have Krishna's mercy. So like that, we should we should have Shastra Chakshu. We, we can remember and see Krishna everywhere. We should remember the instructions of Bhagavad Gita, instructions of the Shastras. And through the Shastra Chakshu, we should see the material world. So like in today's verse from Bhagavad Gita, um, it's saying that um, if we remember Krishna and become conscious of Krishna all the time, then we can easily cross all the obstacles of life. In Chaitanya Chaitamra, there is a similar verse that comes. Chaitanya Chaitamra, this verse is there. Kathanchana smrite yasmin dushkaram sukaram bhavet vismrite vipritam syat shri chaitanyam namamitam. So this verse is saying that things that are very difficult to do become easy to execute if somehow or other one simply remembers Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But if one does not remember him, even easy things become difficult. To that, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I offer my respectful obeisances. So, if we remember Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then our difficult things will become easy. So, I was remembering one pastime from Chaitanya Charitamrit. We have the pastime of Vasudev Leper. So, Vasudev Leper, he had leprosy and he had sores all over his body. And there was pus and worms coming, uh, pus and worms in his sores. And he was smelling very bad. But Vasudev, um, Vasudev, the leper, he had a 
uh, very elevated consciousness. He was a pure devotee. So what would happen when one of the worms from his body would fall down, he would pick up the worm and put it back on the body, saying that my body belongs to the worm as well. So one time he heard that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is coming to Kurma Shetra. And Vasudev Lepra, he desperately wanted to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he was living so far away, this Vasudev Lepra, and he walked a long distance to come there. And when he came there, he found that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has already left. So when he heard that Vasudev, he started crying, lamenting, and he fell unconscious on the ground. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is omniscient. He knows that his devotee is calling for him. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he had already left that place, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he returned. Uh, he was going somewhere, but he returned to this place, uh, Kurma Shetra. And he came and he embraced Vasudev leper. And what happened, this Vasudev, as soon as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced him, Vasudev's leprosy was cured. And he became very beautiful. But then Vasudev, he was in so much anxiety. He thought that now I have become very beautiful. What if I get pride? And what if I forget the Lord? So he asked Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what should I do so that I don't get pride that I'm a very beautiful person and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given me so much mercy? What, if, what should I do that I don't get the pride? And what should I do that I constantly remember you? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave him these instructions. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him that for this, for you to not get pride, you should incessantly chant Hare Krishna Mantra and you should preach Bhagavad Gita, knowledge of Shastras to others. In this way, you will never become proud. So here, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving us an instruction how we can remember him, how we cannot have pride. We keep on chanting Hare Krishna Mantra incessantly, 24 hours a day, and also preach the message to others. So like that, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, if you remember him, then difficult situations will become easy. Then another example that I was thinking of in Chaitanya Bhagavat, we read this pastime during the Mahaprakash Leela, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is manifesting himself as Krishna, the Supreme Lord. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is non-different from Krishna. And uh, he, he, most of the times he is behaving as a, uh, the devotee of Krishna. But sometimes he manifests as the Supreme Lord to reciprocate with his devotees. One by one, um, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he, in Mahaprakash Lila, he was calling uh, devotees and he was reminding these devotees of um, some incidents from their life, from the past, uh, which only those devotees knew about those incidents. So like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he called Gangadas Pandit. And Gangadas Pandit, he was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's school teacher. And uh, this incident uh, happened uh, way before uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's advent to this planet. Um, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is reminding Gangadas Pandit of this incident. So what happened one time, Gangadas Pandit, he was in great distress. He and his family, they were running away from Muslim soldiers who had attacked their village. And these Muslim soldiers, they were exploiting the women of the village. And, they, and the, they, these Muslims, they wanted to exploit his wife and daughter. And Gangadas Pandit and his family, they were, they were running uh, from their home and they were running and running and they came to a dead end, to a river. And uh, in great fear, Gangadas Pandit, he thought, now I have nowhere to go. Now I want to commit suicide um, by jumping in the river. So he was thinking like that, that I want to save myself and my family from these Muslims that are attacking me. Um, but I have come to this dead end. There is no place to go now. Now it's better that I commit suicide. So like that, he was thinking. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Gangadas Pandit uh, during this Mahaprakash Leela, Gangadas, do you remember? At that time, what happened when you were trying to run away from the Muslims, you, you came to a dead end. Do you remember what happened? So he said that at that time, a boatman, he appeared out of nowhere and he ferried you and your family across the river and you were saved. And Gangadas Pandit, it was me, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was saying, it was me who came in the form of that boatman because Gangadas, you remembered me in the time of your distress. You were calling out to me for help in desperation and I heard I heard uh, 
your prayers and i personally came as that boatman so gangadas pandit when he heard when he heard this he became in mad in ecstasy was filled with gratitude to know how how krishna he descended from the spiritual world to become that boatman just to save him and his family and then in the same mahaprakash leela chitra mahaprabhu he called another devotee his name is mentioned as das he said to him do you do you remember one time you were very sick you were having a very high fever and a doctor came and cured you let me tell you it was me who came in the form of a doctor i was sitting by your side day and night and i cured you your fever so like that he was telling uh, chatra mahaprabhu is telling him he came in the form of that doctor so we can think of so many times krishna has descended in our lives to save us from so many problems like sometimes when you're driving on the road and suddenly some car comes into your lane and there's and you are very close to having an accident but somehow it does not happen so we we say we might say thank you krishna oh krishna you saved me at that moment but then we move on we carry on to other things and we forget that krishna saved my life something disastrous could have happened but nothing happened because krishna came and he saved me so someone we might have those um, instances in our life or someone's life that we have heard of someone had uh, some disease and doctors said that oh we can't do anything uh, now it's not in our hands but somehow the patient survives and mysteriously he gets cured some magic some miracles we hear of and we call them as coincidences right they happen it's a coincident but actually krishna comes and protects his devotees so in our life all such incidents we should remember all such incidents krishna he came he came into my life he saved me and how krishna is saving us at every step so this material world is a dangerous place and we you know that's mentioned padam padam yad vipadam there is danger at every step so if there is danger at every step there is someone who is protecting us at every step and that's krishna is krishna is saving us at every single step and we are safe right now we are safe in a peaceful state because krishna he protected us so when we chant the hari krishna mantra how do we there are so many techniques we have heard of how to chant hari krishna mantra attentively but one technique is to be emotionally involved means in our hearts we are filled with gratitude we remember all those times krishna has saved us saved us from so many dangers we should feel like that in our heart we our heart should be filled with gratitude and we should be totally indebted to krishna oh krishna he is achyuta and one name of krishna is achyuta means he he is infallible means he never fails to protect his devotees and we should think like that and we should say oh i cannot stop chanting krishna's name because krishna is so wonderful so amazing he has helped me at every single step in my life so like that our heart should be filled with gratitude and that's how we should be chanting and we will chant attentively if we if we do that with those feelings in our heart so like that chitane mahaprabhu uh, in the mahaprakash leela he was turning to several devotees um he turned to advait advaita acharya shrivas thakur murari gupta he was reminding all these devotees of different times in their lives where chitra mahaprabhu himself descended as to reciprocate with the devotee and then chitra mahaprabhu he turned to haridas thakur so haridas thakur um he is our acharya of he is a nam he is our nam acharya he he used to chant 300000 names of krishna every day 192 rounds of hari krishna mantra every day So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu turned to Haridas Thakur and he said, "Haridas, do you remember one time the Kazi, the Muslim king, he had imprisoned you because he was envious of you, because Haridas Thakur he was a Muslim, but he was chanting Krishna's name all the time. So this Muslim king he was envious of Haridas Thakur and he was saying, 'You should stop chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, otherwise we will kill you.' And then what did Haridas Thakur say? Haridas Thakur said." खंड खंड हो देह याय यदि प्राण 
tabu ami vadane na chhade hari naam so haridas thakur said even if my body is cut into pieces and i give up my life i will never give up chanting the lord's holy names he was continuously 24 hours a day chanting the holy name of krishna so on hearing this the kazi he gave the order to beat haridas thakur and torture him uh, through the 22 marketplaces so there were executioners called and they were brutally beating haridas thakur with stick, sticks and whips and blaspheming him going through the 22 marketplaces so that others see what happens to a devotee who is chanting the hari krishna mantra or chanting krishna's name in the kingdom of this uh, muslim so he, they had a public procession like that and they were publicly uh, beating him and with whips and sticks through these 22 marketplaces so chatra mahaprabhu is saying hari das do you remember when those executioners were beating you with sticks and whipping you and kicking you with their feet there is no way a human being could possibly survive such beating and because you were crying out my names with so much feeling i descended from vaikuntha to save you i descended in my invisible form with sudarshan chakra in my hand to kill those executioners chop off their heads but as you were chanting from the core of your heart with such genuine feeling you were praying my lord please forgive these people they don't know what they are doing please give them mercy please don't punish them so this is what uh, haridas thakur was praying when he was being beaten beaten by the executioners so chatra mahaprabhu said haridas you not even for a single moment found fault in them you you saw only good in them you loved them and you you were willing to suffer and die rather than than them getting any punishment so haridas because of your prayers of compassion for those executioners i couldn't do anything my sudarshan chakra was powerless it did not even leave my finger to kill those executioners not, i could not kill them because of your prayers of compassion my anger towards those executioners it was conquered over by by your love for them so i couldn't hurt them but because i knew that um um uh, i could not hurt them what what did i do what so here chatra mahaprabhu is saying what did he do he did what he did was he lay his body over haridas thakur and he took all the beatings and the whips on his back so chatra mahaprabhu is saying he he took all the whips and beatings on his back because of your love and your compassion o haridas i i did just that i took all these beatings and whips on my back so then lord chaitanya what he did in this mahaprakash lila he opened his chadar and he revealed those those marks of whipping and beating on his beautiful body and haridas thakur when he saw that for his sake chatra mahaprabhu has taken these beatings of the executioners he started weeping and crying and he fell unconscious on the ground he said no no i'm so useless i'm so fallen that i caused chatra mahaprabhu to take the beatings for me so chatra mahaprabhu he was feeling very bad that haridas thakur is is crying like this and all the devotees were all the other devotees that were they were also crying so chatra mahaprabhu he covered himself again with his uttariya he to hide the beating marks on his back and chatra mahaprabhu he tried to pacify haridas thakur and chatra mahaprabhu said haridas please don't feel sad that i took those whipping on my back it is my nature to do this for my devotee this is not the first time i have done it so chatra mahaprabhu he tells the past time when is krishna when he was with the gopas and gopis and the cows in the forest and there was a forest fire and all the gopas and gopis they were crying out oh krishna help me help us help us and krishna what he did he ate the forest fire to save his devotees and sometimes krishna he becomes the servant of his devotees like for the pandavas krishna he became uh, arjuna's chariot driver he became a peace messenger he became a night watchman their chaukidar so krishna he becomes a bhakt king kara he becomes a servant of his devotee so chatra mahaprabhu was reminding haridas this is not the first time i did it i have done it and this is the nature of me this is my nature i i become the servant of my devotees they call me and i come so these um 
I was thinking of these Pandavas. These Pandavas, they are pure devotees of Krishna. And um, even though from their childhood, they had suffered, suffered so much, even though Krishna was right there with them, still they had to go through many painful situations. But they never lost faith in Krishna's protection. So I was reading um, uh, this um, pastime from Srimad Bhagavatam. After the Mahabharat war was over, uh, Ashwatthama, he wanted to take revenge. And he killed uh, the five sons of Pandavas while they were sleeping. And Arjuna then uh, uh, ran after Ashwatthama to capture him. And Krishna at that time was his charioteer. And Ashwatthama, he was running in fear and he wanted to save his own life, which was in danger. And so what did Ashwatthama do? He released a Brahmastra weapon. So, and then Arjuna, when he saw this Brahmastra weapon coming, what was Arjuna's reaction? Arjuna at once turned to Krishna. See, Arjuna is a great warrior. He didn't think that, oh, I'm so great. I can handle the situation by myself. I'm capable enough to handle this. No, Srimad Bhagavatam says Krishna turn, uh, Arjuna turned to Krishna. And Arjuna, what he did, he offered prayers to Krishna. In that difficult situation, what he did first, he glorified Krishna, Arjuna. He glorified Krishna. Arjuna said, oh Krishna, you give fearlessness to your devotees. You are the creator, the proprietor of the world. You protect your devotees, especially those devotees who have taken exclusive shelter of you. You have descended to this world to protect your devotees. Oh Krishna, what should I do in this dangerous situation? So he asked Krishna, what should I be doing? What should I do now? And Krishna then told Arjuna that he should fire another Brahmastra to counteract it and then retract the Brahmastras. Otherwise the whole universe will be finished. So we learn from this pastime that when we have a difficult situation in, in our life, before reacting to the situation or be, before um, planning for things, oh, I can do this, I can do that, I have this person to help me, um, I, I'm already capable enough, I can handle it. The first thing we should be doing is we should be remembering Krishna and praying like Arjuna did. Oh Lord, you are so loving to your devotees. You are Bhakta Vatsal. You give protection to your devotees. Whatever you do is for my ultimate good. I don't know how to handle this situation. Krishna, please guide me. Tell me how should I handle this situation. So Prabhupada says that this is the definition of humility. Uh, humility means... That when you are convinced beyond any doubt that there is nothing in this world, absolutely nothing in this world, not your money, not your family, not your fame, not your gun, not your education, nothing will save you except the mercy of Krishna. When you are convinced like this, then you are humble. So then taking the advice from Krishna, Arjuna, he released another Brahmastra and then he retracted both his Brahmastra and Ashwatthama's Brahmastra. And then he arrested Ashwatthama and he brought him in front of Draupadi. But Draupadi, she was very compassionate. She, she said that, I don't want Kripi, who is Ashwatthama's mother, to suffer the same pain that, that I am suffering by losing my sons. So I don't want Kripi to suffer the same pain. So, so then she said, you should forgive Ashwatthama. So what Arjuna did, he released Ashwatthama, but he cut his hair uh, and he removed the jewel on his head. So then we read in Srimad Bhagavatam, um, when Krishna, he's preparing to leave uh, Hastinapur and go to Dwaraka, suddenly Uttara comes running and um, Ask, she's asking, oh Krishna, save me. She's pregnant at that time with King Parikshit in her womb. Um, and King Parikshit, who was the last heir of the Kuru dynasty. So what happened was Ashwatthama, um, he wanted to take revenge for his dishonor because Arjuna had uh, removed the jewel on his head and cut his hair. He was dishonored. So he wanted to take revenge. And what he did was Ashwatthama, he released another Brahmastra weapon to kill the child in the womb of Uttara, who was the last heir of the Kuru dynasty. So, yeah, so he, he released the Brahmastra weapon. And as soon as Uttara, she saw that the, this weapon was coming towards her, 
she ran she ran straight to krishna she didn't go to yudhishthir maharaj or arjuna or any other person she ran straight to krishna and uttara prayed his prayers in shrimad bhagavatam reading uttara said oh lord of lords lord of the universe you are the greatest of mystics please protect me protect me for there is no one else who can save me from the clutches of death in this world of duality oh my lord you are all powerful a fiery iron arrow is coming towards me fast my lord let it burn me personally if you so desire but please do not let it burn and abort my embryo please do me this favor my lord so utra is praying like that and what did krishna do instantly krishna he became a thumb size in the a thumb size and then he came into the womb of utra and he saved parikshit maharaj from the uh, brahmastra weapon so here is another example how devotee who has taken exclusive shelter of krishna that only krishna can protect me no one else the like krishna says ananya chintayanto ma ye jana paryupasate tesha nitya bhuktanam yoga kshema vahami ham for those who have taken exclusive shelter of me who worship me with exclusive devotion i carry what they lack and i preserve what they have and we see the same example in the case of draupadi when she was being dragged by dushasan on the order of duryodhan to be humiliated and stripped naked in the kuru sabha dushasan dushasan he was pulling draupadi sari and uh, draupadi what did she do she first turned to her five pand- husbands five pandavas for help but the pandavas they were helpless they looked at the ground in shame unable to help her and draupadi then she ran to bhishma and drona but they too looked at the ground in total humiliation we cannot help i i cannot help you they looked at the ground they didn't help her she then looked towards dhritarashtra and she cried out in the kuru sabha that you all are cowards you have no character how could you allow this injustice to take place but still everyone in the sabha they looked down no one was willing to help her and dushasan he was pulling her sari and draupadi she tried to pull her sari with her own little hands but she was no match to dushasan's strength and then when she was in a state of total helplessness and with a heart full of pure humility she raised her two arms in the air in the spirit of sharanagati exclusive surrender to krishna and cried out hey krishna hey govinda so i have this prayer of uh, draupadi this is from mahabharat this is the actual prayer that draupadi made to krishna <laughs> govinda dwaraka vasin krishna gopi jana priya kaurave paribhuta mam kim na jana si keshava he nath he ramanath vrajnathaarthi nashana kairavarna va bhagna mam udarsava janardana krishna krishna mahayogi vishvatman vishvabhavana prapannam pahi govinda kuru madhye vasidatim so draupadi is praying O oh Govinda, O oh resident of Dwarka, O oh Krishna, O oh friend of the Gopis, do you not know that I am being humiliated by the Kauravas? O oh Lord, O oh Lord of Lakshmi, O oh Lord of Raj, O oh destroyer of affliction, save me! I am drowning in the ocean of Kauravas. O oh Janardhan, O oh Krishna, O oh Krishna, O oh best of the yogis, O oh soul of the world, O oh origin of the world, please protect. this surrendered soul o govinda i am sinking in the midst of the kurus so this is the actual prayer of draupadi how draupadi she remembered krishna in the time of her distress took exclusive shelter of krishna and krishna came he manifested as her sari and because krishna is unlimited her sari was unlimited the shasan was pulling and pulling and pulling and draupadi was spinning spinning and as he was pulling the entire room was filled with sari and ultimately dushasan he fell to the ground exhausted and draupadi she was still dressed 
and Krishna, he was embracing Draupadi as her sari. So this is the power of remembering Krishna, Smaranam, and praying to Krishna. When we remember Krishna, Krishna comes. Personally, he comes. Kunti Maharani, in her prayers in Srimad Bhagavatam, she is praying to Krishna. My dear Krishna, your lordship has protected us from a poisoned cake, from a great fire, from cannibals, from the vicious assembly, from sufferings during our exile in the forest and from the battle where great generals fought, the battle of Mahabharat. And now you have saved us from the weapon of Ashwatthama. So Kunti Devi, he's, she is praying to Krishna. She is remembering all the different times that Krishna has saved them. Now all these times, no one could see Krishna physically came to save, to save Pandavas in these situations. Like um, uh, when they were in the house of lack and it was put on fire. And, um, and Krishna didn't physically come. I mean, he, he, nobody saw Krishna physically came. And in the forest, when they were man-eater demons attacking Pandavas, in the Kuru Sabha, uh, Krishna protected Draupadi. Nobody saw Krishna physically. But Kunti knows that it was Krishna who protected them. Be because Pandavas, they have full faith. They, they always remember Krishna all the time and they have full faith in Krishna's protection. Krishna saved them every single time. One time I was remembering when the Pandavas, they were in the forest and Duryodhan, he sent Durvasa Muni to the Pandavas ashram. He wanted Durvasa Muni to become angry at Pandavas and to curse them. So that was his intention. So the, Durvasa Muni and his disciples, they arrived at the time when the Pandavas, they had finished eating and Draupadi also finished eating. So her Akshay Patra, uh, she had a boon that if she has not eaten, the, her, she was given Akshay Patra by this a sun god, that this Akshay Patra can make as much amount of food as needed. But if Draupadi has eaten, then it cannot give anything. So at that time, Draupadi had finished eating and that time Durvasa Muni came. There was no food left over and the Pandavas, they were very nervous. They were in anxiety because they thought, oh, now Durvasa Muni is going to curse us. So Durvasa Muni, he said, oh, I'm going to take a bath in the river Yamuna. I'm going to come back with my disciples and he had like 10,000 disciples with him. So not only it was the Vasamani, he had 10,000 disciples and they had, Pandavas had to prepare lunch for all of these. So he said, oh, I'm going to come back after taking my lunch. Oh, sorry, after taking the bath and I'm going to take, then I'm going to take this lunch. So at that time, uh, Pandavas, they were in anxiety and Draupadi, she prayed intensely to Lord Krishna, Krishna, please help us with this problem. Please help us solve this problem. And Krishna, he hears the devotee's call. So he heard Draupadi's prayers and Krishna immediately came to their ashram and he asked Draupadi to give him something to eat. But Draupadi said, oh, Krishna, I don't have anything. All the food is finished. But Krishna said, oh, get me the container in which you made the food. And so Draupadi got that. And then there was a little piece of food, um, like a little piece of rice left over in the bottom of the container. And then Krishna took that and he ate that and he smiled mysteriously and he said oh now I'm full I'm full and he, and he went away so when we know that when Krishna Krishna ate the little piece of rice this the hunger of the Durvasa Muni and all his disciples they miraculously the, it satisfied the hunger of Durvasa Muni and all his disciples and they decided to not go to Pandava's ashram because they were so full full up to their neck and said, we are already full, let's just run away. So they ran away and they never came to Pandava's ashram. So in this way, Pandavas, they were saved again uh, by Krishna because they remembered Krishna at the time of distress. And it is mentioned in Nectar of Devotion. Um, one time Narad Muni came to Krishna and he said to Krishna, I'm reading from Nectar of Devotion. My dear Mukunda, Although you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the all-powerful person, by making friendship with you, the Pandavas have become bereft of their legitimate right to the kingdom of the world. So Narad Muni is saying that by making friendship with you, O Krishna, Pandavas have lost everything. And moreover, they are now living in the forest in incognito. And sometimes they have to work as an ordinary laborer in someone's house. 
these symptoms are very inauspicious materially but you know what the great beauty is but the beauty is that the pandavas have not lost their faith and love for you and in spite of all these difficulties they are always thinking of you and they are chanting your name and their faith in you actually has increased by going through these difficulties their faith in you has increased that's so wonderful about these pandavas so that's what narad muni is telling krishna so we have these pandavas uh, great uh, pure devotees of krishna so even if there are they are, the pandavas are teaching us that even if there are problems in life we should not stop having faith I and mean, our faith in krishna should not dwindle we should keep on doing bhakti our faith in krishna should not go down our love for krishna should not go down we should not think that daily i am doing bhakti and chanting 16 rounds but still i have problems in my life but still i have so many difficulties so even if we have pain we should tolerate it we should keep on doing bhakti even if our health is not good it's going down even if someone near or dear he dies even if we lose our job even if we lose uh, money or we lose some relationships we our some relationships become bitter our pay, uh, even if our prayers are unanswered we don't get what we are desiring or some unexpected disaster happens our mind is not peaceful we are in anxiety and success is not there even amongst all these problems in life we should continue to do bhakti we should be steady in our bhakti our attitude towards krishna should not change we should understand that krishna is always caring always merciful and whatever is happening with me is krishna's mercy actually because of my karma worse thing should have happened something worse should have happened but krishna is so merciful that he gave me only a little and krishna has given me token punishment so we should tolerate our difficulties like that and like that we should have unalloyed bhakti pure bhakti like um, i will end with this past time gokuleshwar prabhu in his previous class he was uh, some time ago he was telling this past time once arjuna he went to krishna and he said krishna i want to speak about subhadra subhadra is um, arjuna's wife and she is krishna's sister and arjuna he is telling krishna krishna in the battlefield of mahabharat so badra's only son abhimanyu died right in front of you you were present in the battlefield and you are the supreme personality of godhead and so badra she knows that you are the supreme personality of godhead but still you did not protect abhimanyu your sister's son in spite of that so badra's love for you has not decreased that steadiness in bhakti even in even in ordinary worldly relationships if a sister's young son dies in front of her brother who is not god but just an you know, average guy and the brother he is not doing anything to help save the son of the sister the sister and brother relationship will be finished but here we see that subhadra knows that my brother is bhagwan all powerful and he didn't help my son who was being brutally killed by so many kauravas at the same time he was being brutally killed but krishna was there krishna didn't come but still subhadra's love did not become diluted she had full faith that whatever krishna does is good so that's that's pure devotional service to have that faith another past time he told uh, gokulesha prabhu told was once krishna went to rukmini devi my dear rukmini devi he he she he told my dear rukmini devi i want to tell you that in anirudh's marriage my brother balram he killed your brother rukmi krishna's uh, grandson anirudh was getting married to rukmi's granddaughter and in that marriage ceremony balram and rukmi they were playing chess and at that time balram he had won but rukmi he cheated repeatedly and balram appeared to have been defeated and rukmi he was he was laughing at balram and balram he got angry he took his club and hit rukmi on his head and rukmi died 
So Balram killed Rukmi not in a war but in a marriage ceremony, and Krishna was right there, present. And Krishna, he didn't stop Balram, and Krishna didn't protect Rukmi. Krishna was silent. So Krishna told Rukmini Devi, "In Anirudh's marriage, my brother killed your brother, and so many months have passed, but still you have not spoken to me about that incident. You have not inquired to me, inquired." Um, Krishna, why didn't you not intervene? Why didn't you not intervene? Why didn't you stop Balram from killing my brother? You never came to me, Rukmi, Rukmini. Your silence has conquered me. It has conquered my heart. So Krishna was conquered because Rukmini Devi she kept silence. And why did Rukmini Devi kept silence? Because she understood whatever Krishna does is good. In ordinary relationship, any wife would ask husband, "Why didn't you help my brother? Why didn't you stop your brother? He was killing my brother." But but we see that Krishna's devotees they are so great; they have full faith in Krishna, even if the miseries in their life is increasing, their faith in Krishna is also increasing. So our attitude should be that we should do uninterrupted devotional service, unalloyed, pure. a devotional service not because i want something from the lord pure devotional service means we only give we give without when i when i have when i want something that is that is selfishness when i want something from krishna that is selfishness if i want to give and give to krishna that's love so everything we have is given by krishna this body is given by krishna this brain belongs to krishna oxygen sun moon earth water fire air ether fruits vegetables grains everything in this world belongs to krishna so we need to offer everything to krishna and that's without desiring anything back from him that's pure devotional service so i'll end with this one verse from shrimad bhagavatam kai nam vacha manasendriyarva बुद्धि आत्मना वनुष्ठा स्वभावत करोति यद्यत् सकलम् परस्मय नारायणेति समर्पयत्तत् सो दिस दिस वर्स इज सेइंग दैट वी शुड ऑफर आवर माइंड बॉडी वर्ड्स ऑल आवर सेंसेस फॉर द सर्विस फॉर द प्लेजर ऑफ कृष्णा थिंकिंग व्हेन एवर वी डू समथिंग इट्स फॉर द प्लेजर ऑफ कृष्णा वी शुड यूटिलाइज ऑल आवर सेंसेस आवर माइंड एवरीथिंग दैट वी हैव इन द सर्विस ऑफ कृष्णा So in this way, we can remember Krishna all the time, and that's the definition of yukta viragya. So that's all I had prepared for today. Um, thank you, everyone, for hearing me. If anybody has any uh, comments or questions, you can take. Hey, Krishna Mataji, very nice faith awakening class, Mataji. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Thank and you. And you have given a lot. Of- and you have given lot of references from the scriptures and uh, definitely those examples are like you know by examples showing how much krishna loves and uh, thank you so much for your time and efforts like you know on the way how you are explaining is amazing looking forward more of your classes thank you mataji hari krishna okay. thank you mataji hari krishna okay thank you mataji a uh, very nice class uh, <clears throat> one uh, one question um, mataji uh, so i think you, you take a very nice example of draupadi uh, so i was comparing two incidents of draupadi's life the first incident is draupadi was uh, insulted in the assembly when dushasan was trying to disrobe her and <clears throat> i believe uh, draupadi took a vow that she will not uh, uh tie her hairs uh i believe until dushasan's blood or he is killed i believe that's how her vow is and the the second incident that i was comparing that you mentioned that even after knowing ashwatthama has killed her own sons she she was so compassionate she was not in the mood of revenge uh but she forgave ashwatthama so in one first uh, incident where we see her revengeful mood 
and in the second incident we see her more like a forgiving mood uh so mm. i was just thinking like uh, our learning would be like uh, of course we it is very hard to be forgiving in situation like someone kills someone you are beloved once so how do we understand this mother ji i was thinking more in terms of modes of material nature where in a different modes like our behavior is different but if you have any uh, any uh, any comments please share thank you mata ji yeah it is mentioned in the case of ashwatthama that uh, draupadi says that ashwatthama is a son of a brahmana uh, drona, drona and drona is the teacher of arjuna and drona has uh, given so much you know knowledge and um, Uh, to arjuna so he is the son of his teacher so and then that too he is a brahmana so we should forgive him and he, she was also saying that uh, kripi uh, ashwatham is the only son of uh, his mother and uh, she was saying that my my all sons are killed and i know what is misery when i have no son left so i know the misery of the mother so like that uh, she was thinking in case of ashwatham and uh, the other one duryodhan um that he is a kshatriya and kshatriyas you know they have to they they have to fight to protect themselves and so kshatriyas have this spirit you know if somebody is attacking them they need to protect themselves and attack back um so that's the case of draupadi so in our case uh, if somebody you know attacks us uh, how should we handle that uh, first of all we should defend ourselves uh, because this body belongs to it's a property of krishna uh, so we should protect ourselves that should be do we but we should not you know backfire or uh, try to hurt others we should also saw the example of haridas thakur he was so forgiving now there are different levels of consciousness the topmost devotee was a uttam adhikari mahabhagavat he wouldn't even try to save himself he would just um, sh- take shelter of krishna but because we are not at that level um we try to defend ourselves and um, in our hearts so if something wrong has happened to us or somebody has wrong, done wrong we should think that it's because of my own karma like we have that verse tatte anukampam susumiksham anubhunjanai vatma kritam vipakam yadvagu purbi vidadanna maste jivita yo mukti pade sadaya bhag so everything that happens to us first of all we think that it's because of my own karma this person is but an instrument of my karma so like a postman who delivers a letter he is just like a postman whatever that letter is saying that this this letter that came comes to us saying that uh, oh you are uh, you are in debt uh, you have to give so much money to the government it's because we took that debt from the government and now we give we want to give it we should give it back but the postman is just giving us a letter so in that same way that person who is uh, doing something wrong to us is just like a postman we should not be attacking or thinking bad about the postman it's our own karma that is coming back to us and we should also so that's the thing that we should think and we should also think that whatever has happened to us is very you know krishna has protected us we we should have suffered much more much very horrible thing should have uh, happened but because krishna is so merciful only a, we have gotten a token punishment uh, very little punishment so in that way we become forgiving to the person who is doing something wrong or saying something wrong to us um and we have um, you know we become grateful in that situation so that we take it as a mercy of krishna uh, because ultimately this uh, material world is planned to make us become more detached right we we don't we're not planning to live in this world of prison house you know we're not planning to live very enjoyably and comfortably in this prison house uh, these miseries come to us because krishna is reminding us time and time again that this is not your home you need to come back to me so actually the misery is a mercy of god because otherwise if everything went well in our life right we will forget krishna so that's why kunti devi also prays to krishna you give me mercy so that or sorry you give me misery uh, misery so that i don't forget you so again misery should be taken as a mercy of krishna so that we always remember krishna we take shelter of krishna in every situation uh, does it answer your question prabhuji Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mata Ji. So I think I uh, just want to understand. Uh, I think in case of Draupadi, I think what uh, you the way you explain Draupadi's uh, different responses in different incidents. So in the first, in case of Dushasan, I think her response was because he was Kshatriya and 
in case of second incident her response was different because ashwatthama was a brahmana so i believe based on so and i think i believe the way you explain he probably knows like uh, how to what how that behavior would be in terms of kshatriya versus brahmana and that's how she actually we see her uh, responses the responses are very different and i think uh, thank you mataji i think that help like uh, like that there is uh, based on who the other person is whether kshatriya or brahmana then the responses could be different thank you mataji thank you hari krishna hari krishna bhakti uh mata ji uh, am i audible and yes uh, okay uh, i think you said uh, what a wonderful class again um uh, i am out of words but if you with your permission can i add few things what uh, prabhu ji had a very nice question uh yes sure, uh, do we have yes. time yes definitely yeah. okay so well uh there are many things like uh, and again i have a very little qualification but again uh, for my purification i am saying this so uh, mata ji has said very wonderfully tremendous explanation uh, with a lot of scriptural references and this and that <clears throat> just little thing i would add is this that uh, draupadi was mata that is the first thing and mata can never be wrong that is second thing uh humiliation disrobing a mata is a is a heinous crime to, for any mata uh, how old how young doesn't matter there there cannot be any crime which is worse than that uh so that is and she was a kshatriyani uh, so you can, she was not a brahman uh okay uh, she was playing a role of kshatriyani let me say more precisely uh, soul doesn't have kshatriya brahmana whatever but uh, so but she was in a in a role of kshatriyani so her response in that situation was uh, but i would like to little backtrack and i really appreciate your question which was so in depth there are many many angles to that but i will be very short and clear at the same time so the first thing is why she she took the vow now i would add just one detail to your question actually she asked that the blood from dusasan's thigh okay uh, there is a mystery behind that why she asked for thigh actually he was trying to disrobe from the hands but she asked for the thigh why that is even very important question why it was that but i don't want to answer that because you didn't ask that so uh, but again uh, so uh, she asked for uh, ultimate humiliation she asked for that and uh, and actually not only that she did not tie her hair because she wanted to remind arjuna every single moment that worst thing has happened to me and revenge should be taken uh so that is that is a very very furious she was burning in fire day and night until that very day come so imagine this is a mata okay but when you so again i would uh, so no another the biggest explanation is nobody can question mata just like uh, mata ji said very nicely that pita also and that's what rukmani mai demonstrated that she never questioned lord uh, because she knew that he is always right like that lord also know that radharani is always right okay and his wonderful sister krishna uh, that is the name of draupadi uh, lord love her so much and how come i think you have a confusion that how come a sister of a lord who was not she was a believed sister she was not a real sister like maya subhadra how come such a such a great soul is so severely revengeful not just she she demanded and put uh, the note in the in the book of arjun and forget about it she reminded him every moment by her untied hair 
that is not an ordinary thing this is a very significant thing so arjuna was always desperate that when he will do that and actually not arjuna it was on the bhima it was a challenge on the bhima to do that because they were again making long story short the the main point is mother can be never wrong so mother was humiliated severely she chose to an atma raksha as mata ji said is the first thing uh, you may die that is okay but when you live with a live that is live with a dishonor is worse than a death so that's why she she wanted something which is which is probably not equal but even worse than that and why janga that that may be another time but uh, at the time of uh, uh, the son of drona uh, she was mother and she said my son are already dead i already know my grandsons are already dead i already know what is the pain of a mother losing a son i had lost five and this poor lady has only one her husband has already gone and i don't want to take her stick of walking and i already know my pain i i am able to manage my show so much i don't want somebody to suffer like me that is a saintly personality of a same exact mother this is what your probably question was it's a same mother but in a different situation she is reacting so nobody can predict mother that is the answer to your question she has a personal choice and depending on the time place and circumstances she can act and she is always right whether the other party understands other world understand other manifestation or chaud lok understand or not that's a different story or nobody cares about it but she is always right that's the bottom line so i hope i answered that and uh, uh, if if somebody wants then i can explain that why she asked for the janga though the crime was made by the hand so i guess i will uh, i hope i i try to elaborate or add something important thank you prabhu ji i think uh, uh, for your at least the last line i think you said uh, mata is always right and she she whatever she react that uh, we we don't we should not question i think, I think that's what the answer is right so prabhu ji thank you so much prabhu thank thank you for appreciating that and the reason is actually another thing i would like to add to that so thank you i so actually uh, okay so i uh, okay i don't know how to say this but this is this question is a very very intelligent question and that shows your i am appreciating you that you are such an active listener i and again uh, mata ji i i probably i don't know i call her chaturbhuj devi dasi or i don't know whoever speaks so good great mata ji i have one request actually that in this wonderful assembly of this eloquent great devotees i have no ability to speak and no qualification to speak but uh, one request is that there is a there is a great lady great mata in our our thing our history vidushi gargi if somebody takes responsibility to research about her i think it will blow the mind uh, not in a in a recent times that uh, that mata has to fight her existence i feel very sorry i feel and very sorry to come to the statement across uh, nari teri yahi kahani aachal mein amrut aankhon mein pani i think that that is the worst reality of this manifestation but uh, we, i have seen my own mother i have seen many mothers uh, and with that whenever i didn't want to speak this but i hope it was a right attempt and if you allow me i will mention why in the world she asked for janga instead of hand uh if somebody is interested we may take it next time because i think time is running out so so thank you so much uh and vidushi gargi if we if we try to do in the evening or something because all of you are it experts i am an it illiterate 
uh, I even don't know how to use somehow mysteriously. Sometimes I can speak on the Skype, but sometimes, most of the time, I'm struggling. Uh, so, uh, and again, uh, if Mataji, if I somebody can help me how to download, because I whenever I need to, I record the uh, lecture myself. So mm -hmm. that sort of inability or illiteracy I enjoy or I am into. So if somebody can give me a call later, uh, my number is 817-729-6785 and walk me through how to do this because I guess uh, somebody is already recording the thing, so I should not repeat the effort. Uh, that's my humble request. Thank you so much and sorry for wasting your time. Oh, no, thank you so much, Prabhuji, for your comments. Um, what you are saying is you want to download the recorded uh, audio for this class? Is that what you want to do? Uh, I think uh, I think every day probably the class get recorded, but yes. somehow I don't know how to download. Um, oh, okay. Uh, uh, so, so you see, when the class would end, there would be um, uh, they would in the chat box for this class. There would be. I think uh, you you may be an IT person, but but mm -hmm. I am an illiterate. Means I really don't know how to do what. So I'm. I'm not trying to make things difficult, but I have a hard time. I do see those things, but it somehow doesn't happen. It's probably because of I use an ancient phone. Uh, but again, I live a very different. I have a 5S as my phone. Uh, unfortunately, it is iPhone and I, I don't want to learn iPhone. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know. There are many reasons behind that. Uh, but again, we may, we may talk about that. Uh, Again, technology is a great thing, but technology, uh, I feel very sorry that the phones are becoming smarter and and the humans are becoming more and more idiot day by day. Uh, I, I feel very sorry and sorry for that comment. Uh, so that's why I, at least I want to stay away from being idiot. Uh, that's my struggle, I would say. But uh, whatever is necessary is necessary. And as Thakur Bhakti Vino suggested that we have to make our way through. Uh, but I, I took Apple's thing very personally. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's a different story. But I still need to learn Skype so that we can get connected. It's our Srila Prabhupada's extended family. And I'm very, very happy to be uh, thankful to Prem Shindu Prabhu for such a wonderful family he's cultivating for so long. Uh, without a flicker of a shake. So again, I thank him, though he may be listening somewhere or wherever. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, Prabhuji. All right. Um, anybody has else has anything? If not, we can stop the call. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mother. You Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.